I went looking for an old quote this morning by Jawaharlal Nehru. Um, I couldn't find it, but I'm going to sort of paraphrase it from memory. It's a quote that really stuck in my mind. It has to do with Indian society, democracy, and ethics, really. He said something along the lines of, in reality, Indian society is anarchy. You can think and say whatever you like in philosophy and a great number of other fields, but you must obey or respect the laws of caste. Otherwise, all is anarchy unless you put something else in its place. Now that's an interesting quote because India is one of those countries that is pretty much impossible to define. It defies explanation. Even if we remove, say, the non-Hindu population from the picture, it's an enormous, um, enormously diverse society. We have Hindus and non-Hindus. We have uh, various gradations or various types of Hinduism that all seem to be mutually exclusive. For example, what might be forbidden in one caste is, I guess in an extreme case, mandatory in another. What is um, absolutely repugnant to one caste is perfectly acceptable in another. Now you would think you would find these people in a perpetual state of war with each other, but some superficial um, indications to the contrary that make the news all the time. Generally, the position of India's castes and communities vis-a-vis -vis each other is remarkably peaceful. And the attitude is, as Nehru says, um, one of sort of live and let live or else. <laughs> um, if we don't respect the fact that we differ on things, fundamental things, then we've got not just anarchy, and I don't think he meant anarchy in terms of uh, uh, anarchism, I think he meant uh, everybody against everybody else, Hobbes Hobbesian chaos, civil war uh, gone to the nth degree. <clears throat> Let's say you belong to caste X. I uh, follow a strict uh, set of rules and I find certain things repugnant. Let's say I'm a, a southern Brahmin. I've never eaten flesh in my life. I've never eaten fish. I've I'm forbidden all kinds of things, um, and there's no way on earth I would ever consume any of these things. Um, in fact, the thought of doing it might make me feel a combination of uh, blasphemous activity and physical revulsion, extreme physical revulsion. But the people in the next village do all of this. I should actually be opposed to these people. But India has developed this sort of mindset that says, no, no, what I do is right for me. What they do is right for them. Now, I think that that's kind of a very obvious example of how any society works. We all have things that we disagree on in terms of morality, rights, etc., um, <clears throat> but if we attempted to actually act on all those disagreements strongly, if we didn't just sort of ignore the things that other people do that we don't like and pretend that it's not really an issue to us, when really it should be, unless we're all a pack of hypocrites, which we may be, but that's another story. <laughs> um, if we didn't do that, then the alternative is, of course, anarchy, is, of course, civil war endlessly. We need basic ground rules. Even our most fundamental um, beliefs are sometimes going to be contradicted by other people, and they're going to insist on their right to do this. What do we do now? <laughs> well, we come up with a system whereby we accept the fact that we're never going to agree on this one issue, and we'll have to manage that disagreement. If we have oil and water, we have to find some way for these two elements to coexist, or else they fuse and explode. <laughs> so, I think that that's really 
what we can expect democracy to do. Um, it's the best we can expect any government to do, really, unless it's, of course, a dictatorship, whereby they simply say, you behave yourself or I'll kill you. My worldview trumps yours, and I'm not interested in, in, in any explanations from you as to why your worldview is uh, of any meaning to me whatsoever, any value at all. Just do as I say, end of story. I'm stronger than you. Too bad. Um, we either have that, we either have uh, some sort of totalitarianism, or we have a way of managing fundamental disagreements. Now, is it ethical? Is that an ethical thing, say, if you're that uh, southern Indian Brahmin who is a strict vegetarian and believes strongly in the sanctity of all sentient life, etc., to just look the other way when another Hindu goes and throws his nets into the sea and pulls out a pack of fish, throws them live onto the fire and cooks them and eats them. Is that, you know, is he not somehow being a hypocrite? Or I would look at it this way, what are the implications of him not being a hypocrite? <laughs> Thank you.